Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast. Thanks so much for for being here with us today. I have my Bible open as I always do. It's open today to the book of 2 Thessalonians in chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians 3, I'm going to begin reading at verse 3. We've been in verses 3, 4, and 5 here the last half of the week. We're going to finish verse 5 today. I hope and pray that today's broadcast will really help you and I prepare our hearts and minds and souls to really get from our worship time this coming Lord's Day more. I hope that we're helped by the broadcast today to know what we're going to church to accomplish. As we think about going to church, I will be in western Pennsylvania and near the town of Indiana, Pennsylvania. As a matter of fact, Indiana, Pennsylvania is the hometown of Jimmy Stewart. Uh, Right outside of Indiana, Pennsylvania is the town of Clymer. I'll be in the Baptist church there as part of a missions conference, and I love being part of a missions conference in a local church. But right now, I want to begin this way. Do you have a favorite gospel hymn? Well, I do, but my favorite hymn tends to change about every couple of weeks or so. One of my favorite gospel hymns begins this way. In shady green pastures so rich and so deep, God leads his dear children along. I'm sure you know that hymn. I'm sure you know it well. The refrain goes like this. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood, some through great sorrow. But God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. There is a very important theological truth taught in this hymn. And the truth is this. God really does lead his people and praise the Lord he does. I know you can probably quote the 23rd Psalm with me, but the 23rd Psalm is all about the fact that Christ, our shepherd, is leading us. The Psalm says he leads us beside the still waters. It says he leads us in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. But it also says he leads us and goes with us into the valley of the shadow of death. Now, I say all this because our Bible text today talks about the fact that God is leading us, but our text will help answer the where question. Where in the world is God leading us? Where is he taking us? Perhaps, just perhaps, if you and I knew better where God was leading us, then maybe you and I would cooperate more in the journey and complain less. Are you a complainer? I can sure complain at times, and you're probably a lot like me as well. Well, if you're ready, let's answer the where question. Where is God leading us? Before I begin to read the text here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, I want to tell you about one of the gospel tracts that we publish here. And this is probably the easiest of our gospel tracts to read. Now, let me tell you right off the bat, I realize that we have some churches that love our tracts but never use this gospel tract. And I'll, you'll know why very quickly. The gospel tract is entitled Infant Baptism? Question mark. But then it also asks, what does the Bible say? So many people think they're ready for heaven because when they were a baby, their mom and dad took them to a, a church and they were baptized as a baby. I understand why people do that, but what does the Bible say? When you open up this gospel track, again, it's entitled Infant Baptism, What Does the Bible Say? When you open it up, it has a one-word answer across, uh, going sideways across the page in big, huge, bold letters. It says nothing. That's what God's Word says about infant baptism, nothing. On the back panel of the track, it talks about how a person is made ready for water baptism, but that salvation is not found in or by water baptism. 
Only the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse us from our sin. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer is going to give you three ways to contact us. Pick one of those. Give us your name and address. Let me send you a free sample packet, one each of all of our English gospel tracks, and it will be this one, Infant Baptism. Come with me, please. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 3, 4, and 5. Here's what the Bible says. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your heart into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Now, our verses here were originally addressed to a particular local church, and they were facing some struggles, struggles caused by people outside their church, lost people outside the church. They were striving, this church was, to get the gospel out to people in their town and beyond, but they were facing a pushback from some lost religious and political leaders. And again, I've already said a couple of times this week that the world is not against religion just as long as you place all religions on an equal footing. But as soon as you say that your religion is the one and the only way to God, then the world fights back. Jesus said he is the way, truth, and life in John 14. Nobody gets to heaven, nobody gets to the Father except through him. Now, this exclusiveness about Jesus causes many people to react, to resist, to resent, and to push back against those people who are trying to do gospel work. Now, when facing such times of resistance and antagonism, the gospel work here, what do, what do people do in trying to do the gospel work? Well, verses 3, 4, and 5 say we do three things. Verse 3 says, trust God. He's faithful. Verse 4, he says, do this task. What task? Obey the word. But now we come to verse 5. My T word for verse 5 is the word traits. My T word for verse 3 is trust. My T word for verse 4 is task. Now, verse 5, it is the word traits. The Holy Spirit here in verse 5 moves Paul to tell us that you and I, God's people, need to focus on deepening two character traits in our personal lives, in our church body, and in our gospel work. And those two traits are these, love and endurance, or love and perseverance. Verse 5 again says, and the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. I open the broadcast by telling you that God leads his saints and he's our shepherd. We are his sheep, but we ask the question, where is he leading us? Well, this verse says he is leading, he's directing, he is steering us. That word direct means steer. He's steering us towards being like Jesus in our love and in our endurance, our perseverance. First of all, God is directing us into his love. Now, the structure of the Greek language behind this verse here, I am told, can make this verse say two slightly different things. It can be saying that God is directing believers to discover more of God's love, to learn more of his love, to experience more of his love. I like that. I like that a lot. I like to have more of God's love and experience more of God's love, to feel more of God's love. I like that. But also, the verse could be saying that God is directing us into the character trait of God, which is love. Now, I like that too. But frankly, I don't see the need to pick only one of these. I think God wants to direct us into both of these things. He wants us to learn more of his love, but he also wants us to grow more and more in the character trait of love. And in the context we need to be growing in our love for lost people, especially those and even those who are pushing back on us about our gospel work. Remember one of the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. Love is the first one. The Spirit of God wants to deepen in our lives the love character trait to become more like Christ. But now the second thing. God wants to direct us to steer us into the patient waiting for Christ. Now, to be sure, 
we need to deepen our patience or our continual waiting for Christ's return. That we need to always have as a necessary part of our life. We're going to wait patiently for Christ to come for us. But we also need to let God direct us into seeing the patience and perseverance of Jesus again be developed more and more into our lives as well. The book of Hebrews has a verse that says this, who for the joy set before him, speaking of Christ, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Because Jesus knew the glorious end, that what his cross death would bring, therefore Jesus endured the lashings and the beatings. He endured the mocking and the spitting. He endured the crown of thorns and the crucifixion nails. He endured all of this and more. Why? Because he understood that lost, hell-bound sinners would be saved, would be transferred, translated out of the kingdom of death and darkness into the kingdom of everlasting life and light. I submit to you that some of your greatest gospel sermons, some of my greatest gospel sermons are going to be preached not by our mouths and not by our gospel tracts, but by our patience and endurance during hardship times. When we are enduring those hardship times with a joy-filled life, heart, and note in our voice. In the midst of the darkest hours of our life, you and I need to have the joy of Christ. The the difficult times in our life, they are not happy, but we can be joyful. There's a difference, don't you know? Your family's probably been touched by cancer, and so has mine. My wife just had a cancer uh, revisit here, and we're, praise the Lord, everything is clear but you know what? When she had her cancer, we had we spent time on our, our knees before the Lord saying, Lord, heal my wife of her cancer. But she had to go through that, had a surgery. They were small surgeries compared to so many other people, but it sure was a trial big in our lives. But through it all, I'm glad to tell you my wife had such peace and joy. She had the endurance of Christ. I learned from her. That's a great lesson she preached to me. You and I need to grow in the character traits of God's love and endurance. Perhaps we need to pray as we get ready to go to church this coming Lord's Day. Lord, use my church family. Use the pastor's sermons. Use the singing of the hymns. Use the Sunday school class. Use it all to strengthen my love to become more like Jesus and how I love people. Strengthen my endurance to stay with Christ and not forsake Christ, to stay joyful in the midst of trials, no matter what that trial may be. We need to become more like Christ. Amen. Oh, dear friend, perhaps you're listening right now and you're going through a trial, but you don't have a Savior to go through with you. What a terrible thing. You can have a Savior right now if you'll receive him. Christ died on the cross to be your Savior He shed his blood that you through him can be saved. If you can, right now, bow your head and heart, cry out to him for mercy. Say, Father, save me because Jesus died for me. If you say that, if you pray that, communicate with me. Tell me you've done it, please. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309 828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.